Valorant will have Mumbai servers, Apex Legends finally has crossplay, and something new is coming for NFS tonight. Hello everybody and welcome to this new episode of Top Gaming News. My name is Gaming Madness and let's just jump into some exciting news of this week. Valorant has grown so much popular over the months, with it being very similar to that of CSGO and also being a bit easier according to some people. People are really having lots of fun grinding Valorant and trying to get their rank up. But they are not having so much fun with the latency. Since the servers are not set in India, players don't get the best latency possible. Usually it goes around 70 to 100 which is obviously not that great and you can always work around on that. But still having less latency is always beneficial to games like these and people have been requesting to have Indian servers in Valorant. Not only that, a Riot employee actually pitched the idea to set up servers for South Asia region. And previously, some data miners have also found that Mumbai was also a part of that South Asia region. Now it looks like servers are up in Mumbai, but it is not officially up as of yet because they're still testing the stability of the server. But some players were able to play in that very server and my god, the latency was very low. It was around 30 and less than 30 latency which is really great in comparison to 70 or 60. Finally, a game which is getting Indian servers feels like a very big deal and it is. This will help people enjoy the game even more with reduced latency but most importantly, it will also help the competitive scene of Valorant in India. And when these Mumbai servers are officially up, there will be more tournaments and events and it is going to be really fun. Well, there was another thing that was added to Valorant and that is a new patch which saw the operator sniper rifle getting nerfed. Now the rifle will fire slower, will do less leg damage, your movement will be slower when you are scoped and the gun becomes inaccurate soon after moving. Also, it will cost $5,000 instead of $4,500. And there were more so changes in this new patch and in order to know everything about this, you can go to the website and check what are the patch notes. One of the things that was promised in Apex Legends was crossplay and it looks like it's coming tomorrow with the crossplay beta. The game will also see the start of a aftermarket collection event and an all new limited time mode event called Flashpoint. Waiting for reverse flash on this one. You can add friends from your platform, you can also see what platform your friends are playing from. But there will be no cross-platform progression unfortunately, but it could come out later. Respawn said that they will talk about this more when the Steam version of the game comes out later this year. And not only that, the Steam version will also support crossplay. Now to make sure that console players don't get matched with only PC players, the matchmaking by default will keep PC players and console players separate even when the crossplay is live. So for example, if I am playing on PlayStation 4 and if I invite two people who are playing on PC, then the matchmaking will turn into PC matchmaking. So in this way, PC players won't get into the PS4 matchmaking, but the PS4 players might come into PC matchmaking if the team has PC players. Now by default, the crossplay feature is turned on, but you can turn it off on settings. But if you turn it off on settings, you will be only matched with those people who have their crossplay settings turned off, meaning there will be higher queue times. Well, Respawn believes that players won't be turning off this crossplay feature. And to be honest, why will they? Because we were asking for crossplay feature for this long. So I guess I'm going to turn it on. Now this flashpoint event is absolutely crazy because there is no healing items and the only way you can recharge your shields and heal yourself up is standing inside the circle called flashpoint. And this circle will be scattered around the King's Canyon map. Not only that, this mode will also incorporate always be closing rules. So the ring keeps on closing and you have to keep on moving. This event will also have 24 themed cosmetics that you can buy. There will also be offers and an event exclusive price track to chase after. This event will go till 20th of October, which means almost all of October. This is going to be fun. Amnesia Rebirth is the next Amnesia game after so long time. The last game they made was Soma, which played out very well and is a really good psychological horror game. This time in Amnesia Rebirth, they get to learn things from Soma and implement it in the game. There was a gameplay look of the game and it does look like how Amnesia plays, interacting, opening with doors and trying to find keys to open doors and cages and so much more. This time around they're using matchsticks instead of tinder boxes because now you can use the matchstick to light multiple light sources. This matchstick is very vulnerable so if you move faster the match will blow faster. Not only that you have less matchsticks to begin with. So you have a really big decision to take whether you have to light the match to go through that dark hallway or just go through that dark hallway without any matchstick so that you can light a light source which is at the end of the hall. 
the light will also blow out at the wrong time, meaning it might blow off and then when you light it up again, there will be a monster standing right in front of you. Uh, very fun times it will be. <laughs> The sanity option in this game has also changed and it's more reactive. Instead of just falling down and fading to black, which was the amnesia, the dark descent uh, thing, this time around your fear will rise and that will increase the symptoms of a mysterious ailment that the lead character suffers from. This has been inspired from Soma. Tasi Trianan, the lead character, whose condition is also tied with the failure system, which determines what happens when she faces a monster. If Tasi is too frightened, her affliction will take a harsh turn. There will be visible changes to her appearance and it will also have an immense narrative significance. Well, the info right now is very vague and for obvious reasons, but right now the game looks absolutely intense, scary and worthwhile. And since they're adding improvements looking back at the previous games, I think this might be one of the best horror games of this year. I have no doubts from fictional games because they have been making really good horror games. The last one, Soma, that did very well, so I believe that this one will too. This game is available on Steam for only 6.29 rupees. Speaking of Steam, there is a Steam Autumn sale that's gonna begin from 7th of October, that is this Wednesday, till 13th of October. So it's time to buy some of those games that you have wish listed. Insomniac announced Marvel's Spider-Man Remaster last week, which is basically made for PlayStation 5 to use its architecture. And the biggest change they added was changing the face of Peter Parker. I mean, I don't mind that they changed it, but now that I've played Spider-Man, I actually like the original Spider-Man face. So I am not very happy for that. According to them, they had to recast because they wanted to cast someone who looks similar to Yuri Lowenthal, the voice actor for Peter Parker. They wanted to make sure that the face is more believable and that is to have a facial mask to Yuri. Other than that, they have changed reflections, environment, the city, also the lighting and more things that needs to be changed in a remaster. They have also made the game playable in 60 FPS performance mode. So there you go, you will enjoy the game in 60 FPS. Well, that is not the only thing they have added. They have added three Spider-Man suits and one of them is Amazing Spider-Man suit. I was wondering, why didn't they add that suit in the first game? I don't know, license issue? Now, in order to get this remaster, you have to buy Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Edition in PlayStation 5. But if you want to play only Miles Morales, then don't worry, you don't have to buy PlayStation 5 because this game is also coming to PlayStation 4. And apparently, the size in PlayStation 4 is bigger than PlayStation 5. The only difference is 2 GB. PS5 needs 50 GB of hard disk space, whereas PS4 will need 52 GB of hard disk space. I cannot wait for Spider-Man Miles Morales and I don't know who the villain is, so I'm very much excited who that would be. Recently, Need for Speed has been putting out some screenshots in their official Twitter account and the website of NFS also has a countdown to tonight. These images look really cool and somehow it looks like an underground game, but I don't know, I could be very wrong. Now it seems like a box art cover for NFS Hot Pursuit Remastered was also leaked in uh, Twitter on both PlayStation and Nintendo Switch and it has been worked by Stella Entertainment, the same company who also worked on Burnout Paradise Remastered. So it's more so giving the news that NFS Hot Pursuit Remaster is going to be that game that they will be revealing tonight. Now we are supposed to get some kind of announcement at 8pm tonight. So I'm excited for that. Speaking of EA, EA Play is coming to Xbox Game Pass on PC this December. Although the date has not been announced and for console people, they will get a month earlier. That is November 10th. EA Play allows you to play big games from EA such as Battlefield, Mass Effect, Mafia, Titanfall 2, FIFA 2020 and so much more. And EA isn't the only company that Xbox Game Pass will have games on because now Xbox also owns Bethesda. So Xbox promises that the next future Bethesda game will be available on day one in Xbox Game Pass. And one of the games includes Starfield and speaking of Starfield, there were some leaked images out for this very game. It shows the space that we are in and I guess the ship that you will be using. Can't really say but it looks really really good. Also this week on October 8th, Fall Guys Season 2 will begin with new maps, new modes and more crowns. That's right, instead of giving you one crown for progression reward, you will be getting three crowns. Now what do you do with these crowns? Well, you buy cosmetics and some of these cosmetics, well, they take a lot of crowns. And that's why they're doing this for Season 2. They're not reducing the amount of crowns each cosmetic gets. They're just increasing the amount of crowns in general. So is anyone excited for Fall Guys Season 2? Let me know in the comments below. I don't even know if anybody cares about Fall Guys since Among Us is here. 
Well, that was all for me in this episode of Top Gaming News. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure to leave a like and comment down below what you think of this very episode. And subscribe if you haven't already to watch more such videos every single week. My name is Gwen Mendes and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Take care and see you next time.